Dr. William Harris has been a leading researcher in the omega-3 fatty acid field for 40 years. He has over 300 scientific papers on fatty acids and health. As the co-inventor of the Omega-3 Index and founder of Omega Quant Analytics, Dr. Harris has been ranked among the top 2% of scientists worldwide based on the impact of his research. And with that, let me start the interview. Hello, Dr. Harris. You've been a leading researcher in the omega-3 fatty acid area for over 40 years and are the founder of the Omega Quant Analytics organization. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome, Richard. Glad to be here. Thank you. So, Dr. Harris, uh, what I'd like to start with, I, I know it's kind of basic, is to understand kind of what are fats and for dietary fats, um, what... What is a fat and what different types are there? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Start at the start at the basics. Well, fats are um, things that are typically made of triglycerides, um, which is a chemical term. But if you think of uh, vegetable oils at the grocery store, those are all fats. They're just liquid, so we call them oils. If they're solid, we call them fats. So mm. Crisco shortening, butter, Margarine, those are all, those are all fats mm -hmm. as well, and they're just. Uh, but fats and oils are, are all basically triglyceride-rich uh, food products, and they are made up of a. All of them are made up of a chemically a a three carbon backbone called glycerol, mm -hmm. and attached to those three carbons are three fatty acids, and a, a fatty acid is. Uh, a long carbon chain, usually between, say, 12 and, and 20 carbons long. And sometimes there are double bonds in those molecules, which we call points of unsaturation. So you have uh, a, a fatty acid like uh, we'll call palmitic acid. It's very rich in palm oil. It's called palmitic. It's 16 carbons long and it has no double bonds. So it's a, we call a saturated fatty acid. Um, and that would be something, obviously, that would be, um, you, you'd find that in in, in meat, uh, some of the, the marbling in meats, a lot of palmitic acid. Um, then you get other fatty acids, like uh, one of the essential fatty acids, the omega-6 family is called linoleic acid. It's 18 carbons long and it has two double bonds. So we call it 18 colon two. And it's an omega-6, which I'm sure we'll get into later. But uh, fundamentally, fats and oils are almost completely made up of fatty acids. Right. And then we have monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. Right. Saturated, monounsaturated, and poly. Right. So zero double bonds, one double bond, two or more double bonds. And that's the poly. Mm -hmm. um, and the polyunsaturates are vert foods that are rich in polyunsaturated fats are like uh, soybean oil, canola, olive oil. Um, they're all liquid at room temperature. Um, things that are rich in monounsaturates, uh, that could be something like, a, a, well, canola and, and olive are also um, uh, rich in monos and they're liquid. Things that are, that are rich in saturated fatty acids are solid. Uh, just the chemical uh, form of them. And so, yeah, you really just have uh, one class of monounsaturates, one class of saturates, and then two families of the polyunsaturates, the omega-6 family and the omega-3. So you almost need an org chart to you know, <laughs> lay it all out. But um, and, and it's really the polyunsaturates that are essential fatty acids in our diet. Monounsaturated fatty acids and saturated fat, we don't eat we don't have to eat them. We can make them. Uh, the polyunsaturates we have to eat in, for our own health. They're like, in a sense, they're like vitamins. Right. Okay. So if we look at, so you've been studying mostly uh, omega-3 fatty acid. So yeah, could mostly. you just, yeah. Uh, is, is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, could you talk, so what makes it omega-3. Why is it called omega-3? Why is it called omega-6? And yeah, uh, right. what's, what's special not, about it? Yeah, it's not just fancy language. Um, right. it, it comes from, if you look at, I mentioned they're, they're a carbon chain. It's a link, a bunch of carbons look together. 
the and they're called fatty acids and chemically the one end of that molecule actually has an acid group on it if you remember from your chemistry days there's an acid group and then the far end of the molecule just ends in what we call a methyl group it's just the final the final carbon uh, the acid group is called the alpha carbon mm -hmm. and the final methyl group is called the omega carbon so it's the beginning and the end from the greek alphabet so we have <clears throat> if you have so counting from the omega end uh, if you count back three carbon atoms and you put a double bond there then that's an omega minus three fatty acid if you count back six bonds or six carbon atoms and that's the first double bond then that's an omega minus six fatty acid, or we say omega six, we say omega three. But that tail end of the molecule where the first double bond is counting from the final carbon atom, which is the omega mm -hmm. carbon atom. Sometimes it's called the nth carbon. So right. you get N minus three, N minus six, the same thing. Um, N or omega are interchangeable nomenclatures, but that's where it comes from. It's really from the alpha and omega in the Greek alphabet and the counting back from the final carbon. Right. And, and then the short form when you write them down is like, I don't know, C18N minus three or something like that. You would you would say say C18 colon two N mm. minus six. That would be right. linoleic acid. So it's a 18 carbon. It's got two double bonds. The first double bond is six positions from the terminal, the nth carbon, the end carbon. Right. So that could be many like omega threes or, or the... There's only there's like three that are important to biology. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. So, so could we talk about those three, mm -hmm. um, uh, fa those three omega threes that are important in biology? Sure. There's the plant omega three, uh, which we call alpha linolenic acid (ALA), and that's an 18 carbon, three double bond omega three fatty acid. That's kind of the parent uh, fatty acid of this family because um, we can, to some extent, eat that and convert it to the two longer chain omega-3s, one of which is called EPA and the other one is DHA. Those are what we call the marine omega-3 fatty acids. They're rich in, in fish and uh, um, marine life uh, foods. Uh, and those are EPA is a 20 carbon with five double bond omega-3 and DHA is a 22 carbon with a six double bond uh, um, uh, omega-3 fatty acid. So those are really get So you have the plant and then you have two from an animal, from fish. Right. And so we can convert ALA to the others, uh, but it's not Just, very efficient. Yes, correct. Not very efficient. Um, it's, uh, it's doable. Um, apparently anybody who is a, a vegan Mm -hmm. uh, and has been so for a long time, uh, still alive, <laughs> because they uh, for, they can convert some of that ALA to EPA and DHA, a, a su sufficient amount to actually, you know, live and grow and reproduce. And um, so, it, at one level, you could say that ALA is really the the essential omega three mm -hmm. fatty acid. And then EPA and DHA are not necessarily in dietary essentials. You don't have to eat them, um, but they are certainly they give a lot of health benefits when we do eat them. Right. Is there any in indication that if you don't have them, it kind of upregulates the process of converting ALA into EPA and DHA? Yeah, there's some evidence for that. There is there is some Eskimo evidence for that. Um, we've seen that Eskimos who you know, spend generations eating high levels of EPA and DHA. Um, don't, they kind of downregulate the um, synthesis from ALA. And so that kind of goes the other way from what you're talking about. Right. Um, we do see, um, yeah. uh, we do see that um, people who eat only ALA, they do convert a little quicker right. than, than people who eat a lot of EPA and DHA. Okay, so I, I want to spend most of today on omega-3, but we should talk okay. a little bit about omega-6. Um, yeah. So what omega-6s are important to biology? Uh, linoleic acid, um, 18 carbon, two double bond. That's the one that's 50% uh, of like corn oil. 
is linoleic acid. Uh, 50% of soybean oil is linoleic acid. Uh, so it's, it's, we, that's the one we get. That's the one that's classically, even from to hundred years ago, was discovered as the essential fatty acid. Um, and that's where, so we get that from plant products. Um, right. That one can be converted very similarly on the, like on the omega-3 side, the, the 18 carbon omega-6 linoleic acid can be converted to a 20 carbon polyunsaturated fatty acid called arachidonic acid, which is a very important uh, fatty acid of metabolism too. We don't really have to eat arachidonic acid. We can make it. Right. And so th there is some kind of like omega, like the omega-6 is not so healthy. It is like is viewed as not being so healthy. And well, yeah, that's it, so, a, it's viewed by some right. as not being healthy, but not by me. Okay. And so you don't see a issue with the amount of omega-6 you're eating. It's more to do with how much omega-3. That's that's my that's my belief that the problem, the health problem related to omega fatty acids in America, particularly in the West, is the lack of omega-3. It's not the presence of the omega-6. Right. Um, in fact, there's, there's good data. We, we've been part of studies that have shown that higher level, higher blood levels of omega-6, not lower, but higher levels of omega-6 are associated with lower risk for heart disease and diabetes to major diseases of the West. So that speaks loudly to me that higher omega-6 levels are better than lower.